12. Uh, question 12. The concentration of sodium hypochlorite in swimming pool water can be determined by redox titration. This is a quite a common uh, redox that's used in quite a lot of different questions. Okay, we've got a 100 centimetre cubed sample from the swimming pool is reacted with excess acidified potassium iodide solution, making iodine. The iodine formed in step one is titrated against a standard solution of sodium thiosulfate with a concentration of 0 0.00100. A small volume of starch solution is added towards the end point. Okay, so just, just to be clear on what we're doing here, this is what we're trying to determine, okay? And we are making iodine which goes to this which we can then react with the thiosulfate okay so we can consider when we get to the titration bit of it just while we're looking at here there's two of these that's a one 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 we can kind of read it back the way from here to here okay so whatever if we're looking for this calculation here whatever we get as the iodine would give us the sodium um, hypochlorite um, because it's part of the same kind of link. I'm just going to wipe that back out so I can still see the numbers. Okay. Describe in detail how a burette should be se prepared and set up ready to begin the titration. It's worth three marks so there is quite a lot to run from this one and to be honest you would be as well just working to the mark scheme. The mark scheme is pretty straightforward. Okay so first off if I'm going to take a burette the most important thing I would say you need to do is to rinse through um, with the thiosulfate, okay? Because if you don't rinse through with that, then you have the potential for side reactions. You may have stuff that's already in the in the burette, um, which is going to mess with it, okay? So you rinse through. Um, you then have to fill your burette with a funnel. And very importantly, you need to remove the funnel because otherwise what you have is the potential for that kind of last drip that's sitting in the funnel to drop in at some point and mess with your numbers. And that could be enough to throw off concordance. Okay, right. You then need to run into the scale. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you've got your, your burette set up, it's a very dodgy burette drawing, sorry, with a little tap, um, and your scale starts here, OK, you normally filter about here and then you run it so it's onto this part, the scale point that you can read. OK, and what that does is remove any potential for little air bubbles and also means that this bit here below the tap is running clean. OK, that you, again, you don't have kind of air bubbles in there. So we run it in the scale will give you um, no air bubbles. And at which point you can then read off your starting position um, to the base of the meniscus um, as a standard. Okay, but that's, there's your kind of three points. Okay. Oh, sorry, dropping my pen. Uh, write the ion electron equation for the oxidation reaction occurring in step one. Okay, oxidation is loss. I need something which is either uh, losing negative charge or going from neutral to to positive okay what we have here is a very clear something losing a negative charge i would then frankly just go straight to data book if i wasn't sure and just write it from that okay calculate the concentration in moles per liter of sodium hypochlorite in the swimming pool's water if an average volume of 12.4 centimeters cubed of sodium thiosulfate was required OK, there are multiple ways that you can do this. Let's go with the shortcut method first and if we're happy with it. OK, right. This is a um, titration, so I can use C2, C1 V1 over N1, C2 V2 over N2. Being really careful, OK, the N1 and the N2 is your stoichiometry from the equation. OK. So we are working with our NaOCl, that's the one we want, to, we want to find out, and our N2 is the thing that we are working with and know, okay? So our N1 in this one is 1 and that's 2 because of what I said at the beginning, okay? So 
one of these, two of these. So, so this one's going to be one and that one's going to be two when we write it out. OK, so C1 times 100, because this time if I do this this way, I don't have to actually change it into litres, which is why I quite like it if you're happy with it as a setup. OK, um, divided by one. So I'll just leave it as is. I don't need to put anything else in. And my C2 is my 0 0.00100, 0, 0, if I wanted to put that one in. And as I say, my 12.4, I don't have to do anything with, divided by 2. OK, so to get my calculation for that one, um, I could just swap these over, actually. So I'm going to do uh, 2 times C1 equals 0 0.001 times 12.4 divided by 100, um, and then divide by 2. OK, um, and that will give me my total. OK. Um, which gives me C1 is 6.2 times 10 to the 5 moles per litre. OK. Right. If you don't like the shortcut method, which is absolutely fine, OK, you still need to recognise that we have any OCL going and with this is any 2 s 203 OK. We need to know that that's a 1 to 2. So you need to have got that. OK, but we can run just a straight ABC method. OK, so on the ABC method, what we're saying is calculate any moles that you can. The only moles that you can calculate is the sodium thiosulfate. OK, so what you're going to do there is you're going to say your moles of your sodium thiosulfate. Moles is concentration times volume. So my concentration is 0 0.001 times this time I'm going to put it into litres because that's um, what we should do for that, okay, um, which is going to give me my moles. I'm not going to um, write that down in that one because I'm going to end up with the not enough space. Well, not not enough space, it's just going to get messy. Okay, so I've got my, my moles in of this. I then go to my balanced, B is for balanced, go to our balanced equation, find the stoichiometry here, okay. This is a 2 to 1, so I'm going to take my N here, divide it by 2 to get my 1, and then what I need now is my concentration, do my final calculation. So concentration of, sorry, of my hypochlorite. Okay, so you're just using a rearrange of the, the normal equation. Moles is concentration times volume. So concentration is moles over volume. Take my moles from there, divide it by my volume, which is 0 0.1. And that will give me exactly the same answer as I have up here. Okay, whichever method works for you. Just use it. OK, right. I've kind of gone a little bit further down than I meant to on that one. Let's have a look at this B. The level of hypochlorite in a swimming pool needs to be maintained between one and three parts per million. Four, four, sorry, 400. Yes, 400 centimetres cubed of a commercial hypochlorite solution will raise the hypochlorite level of 45,000 litres of water by one part per million. Calculate the volume of hypochlorite solution that we've needed to add to an Olympic swimming sized pool. OK, capacity of 2,500,000 litres to raise the hypochlorite level from one part per million to three parts per million. OK, right. This one, again, don't think is, is too, too bad, although the numbers are not lovely. OK, so what we have is, I'm just spinning down so I've got space on this one. We have your original, kind of this is how much would be treated by 400 centimetres cubed, OK? And I have this volume in my Olympic size swimming pool. Sorry, two, and then one, two, three. Right, OK. Um, and then I can just do proportion. So my two and a half thousand, sorry, two and a half million divided by um, 45,000 times by 400 would give me this. OK, now that would be raising it by one part per million. So that means that I've gone from one part per million to two. I need to get to three parts per million. So I'm just going to times that by two because that's going from one to three, which means that I have four, 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 four point four centimetres cubed, which is forty four point four four litres. And there's your answer. Yeah, it, it's I think it's the size of the numbers that makes that one difficult. Okay, C. 
Uh, the familiar chlorine smell of a swimming pool is not due to the chlorine, but compounds called chloroamines. Chloroamines are produced when the hypochlorite ion reacts with compounds such as ammonia produced by the human body. Okay, so we've got a whole series of different reactions there, giving you monochloroamine, dichloroamine, and trichloroamine. Chloroamines are less soluble in water than ammonia due to the polarities of the molecules, so readily escape into the atmosphere, causing irritation to the eye. Explain the differences in polarities of ammonia and trichloroamine molecules. Right, now this actually would not be possible with the new data book, okay? Um, with the older data book, like the one that's part of this uh, Mart scheme, it, it works fine, okay? Right, so what we have here, nitrogen has an electronegativity of three, hydrogen is 2.2. So in ammonia, okay, we have a strongly polar bond uh, creating a polar molecule as well because we've got an asymmetry in the molecule. So this molecule here will strongly associate with the water molecules because it's really easy to make, in this case, not even just dipole-dipole attractions, but we've got full-on hydrogen bonds forming. Okay, in this one, the nitrogen is 3 and the electronegativity of chlorine is also 3. So what you have here is non-polar bonds forming. So these non-polar bonds are not going to want to associate with um, water at all, so it's not going to remain soluble. Okay, um, But it's the polarities that you're looking at to explain. Here's your polar and there's your non-polar. So it doesn't even matter that this is a, an asymmetrical molecule because you've got non-polar bonds inside it and to get a polarity of a molecule you need to have polar bonds and then the asymmetry. Chloroamines can be removed from water using UV light. One step is the process in the process of the formation of free radicals. State what's meant by the term free radical. Right, what we're looking for here is unpaired electrons. It's what creates um, your your free radical. Okay. Um, another step in the process shown below. State the name for this type of step in a free radical reaction. Okay, so you have three steps. You have initiation, oh that's not spelling that one, initiation, propagation, and finally termination. Okay, so in initiation, you have, you start with no radical, no, no radical, and you go to having a radical there. Propagation, you have a radical and you make another radical, doesn't need to be the same one. Termination, you have a radical and you get rid of the radicals at the end. Okay, that's your kind of three kind of stages. So here is a radical, here is a radical. So this one is propagation. Oh, gation. And that's it.